This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and the question describes an alcoholic patient who presents with a painful swollen first metatarsophalangeal joint. The aspiration of the joint reveals increased leukocyte count. There is no history of travel, dysuria, dysentery or sexual contact in this patient. Blood urea, nitrogen and serum uric acid both are normal. What is the clinical diagnosis? And your options are acute gouty arthritis, septic arthritis, reactive arthritis and pseudogout. Now this question becomes very interesting because of the two things. In the aspiration only leukocyte levels are increased. You don't have any uric acid crystal and even the serum uric acid is normal. So what will be the correct diagnosis in this case we are going to see. Before I actually go ahead and you know talk about this question let me discuss a very very high yield topic that is acute gout. So when you talk about patients of acute gout generally you will be given a patient who is alcoholic or you know you can be given a history of a middle aged man or a female who is on treatment for hypertension primarily on diuretics okay so this is the kind of clinical history you are going to get and what happens in these groups of patient is essentially if you talk about the pathogenesis either there can be an increased production of uric acid or decreased excretion of uric acid which means the production is normal but the excretion of uric acid is decreased. Both of these lead to accumulation and precipitation of uric acid and these uric acid crystals are needle shaped crystals. So direct damage by needle shaped crystals is implicated in the pathogenesis of your acute gout. Now what are the clinical features they will present with? So one very very important clinical feature which we talk is podagra which means there will be you know and which are the common joints involved so one of the first and the most common joints which will be involved will be first metatarsophalangeal joint ankle joints will be involved okay and other generally small joints will be involved okay. knees also can be involved so don't be under impression that knees cannot be involved so you have podagra of joint what is that so the joints will be warm tender and red so signs of inflammation will be there in the joint so this is the first clinical feature then there will be some soft tissue deposit called as tophi both all of these i'll show you clinical images towards the end um, related to this topic and all the relevant images so stick till the end so tophi can be seen another very important clinical history which you can get is history of recurrent stones so nephrolithiasis you know this history can also be given by the patient. So these are the clinical history. How do you investigate this patient? How do you work up this patient? So work up, remember this has been asked in the examination. What is the investigation of choice? It is the examination of joint aspiration. Fluid. So we aspirate the fluid, look it under microscope and then we will have our diagnosis. So what kind of things we find in the joint aspiration? So remember when you aspirate, the aspirate can be chalky white in color okay it will be turbid and chalky white you can have your needle shaped negatively bifringent crystal that is seen under polarized light and lastly you will have increased leukocyte count somewhere between 2 to 6k very high leukocytes count has also been documented but generally the leukocyte count will be increased between 2 to 6k. Another so you can also get a 24 hour uric acid excretion in urine. Why? Because I have told you they distinctly belong to two different groups either over producer or under excretor. So 
you know both of those group you can uh, differentiate bit, uh, between both of these groups based on the 24 hour uric acid excretion obviously you will get an x-ray done a very important sign in x-ray is called as martel sign we'll see the x-ray in a while towards the end of the lecture where i will show you the x-ray so martel sign is because of the sclerotic you know uh, uh, damage to the joint articular surface of the joint and uh, you can get a usg joint also done and usg joint you will get a double contour sign again i will show you the image of a double contour sign in usg so this is how the patient will present how you will investigate how will you manage the patient of an acute count so obviously ice packs remember normal cox2 inhibitors do not uh, you know have a uh, not is not able to reduce the inflammation and the pain so you will go for indomethacine or naproxen in these patients you can also go for intra articular steroids okay colchicine can be given at the dose of 0.6 milligram thrice a day okay and one very important thing which you don't have to give is aspirin and allopurinol these are contraindicated in your acute count cases one another very important question which they will keep asking in the examination of side effect of colchicine remember side effect is diarrhea so you will have to tell your patient when you are prescribing them on colchicine and uh, how long this drugs has to be given so remember when all the tophi disappears i'll show you the image of tophi these are soft tissue uh, you know uh, deposits of uric acid so once the tophi uh, you know disappears or six month after the uric acid becomes normal so this is the duration of treatment and depending upon I, when they are either they are over producer or under secretor for over producers we can give allopurinol okay and for un, uh, again another very important drug can be febu stat allopurinol has uh, you know the side effect of allopurinol again has been asked in the examination so two very important side effect you have to remember is granulomatous hepatitis directly it has been asked in the examination multiple times and second is toxic epidermal necrolysis or steven johnson syndrome so side effect of it febustat has a very good renal profile so all your renal patients you will put it on Febustat, not on allopurinol. Okay, let's talk about under secretors. So they again, there are two drugs. One is pro benicid. So this basically, uh, you know, increases the excretion. And second is lecithinu rad. Lecithinu rad. So this basically decreases the reabsorption of uric acid. So once it, is, once it is excreted from the kidney tubules, reabsorption of uric acid is here. So lecinurad and probenicid. So these are the two drugs. Another very important thing they have asked is, you know, what is the treatment of chronic refractory acute, uh, refractory gout? So remember, paglotecase IV is used in cases of refractory acute gout, uh, refractory gout, chronic gout. Now, so important topic so many questions have been directly indirectly asked on acute gout so i have taken the complete liberty to teach you gout once we have learned about gout let's learn how to differentiate between gout and pseudo gout so what is pseudo gout again it's a, a joint inflammation but this time we don't have uric acid we have calcium pyrophosphate so let's look at the difference between acute gout and pseudo gout so here in acute gout we have deposition of uric acid here we have deposition of calcium pyrophosphate another very important difference is uh, you know this primarily involves your 
small joints this will involve your you know larger joints especially knee joint okay here you will not see any you know articular surface deposit but here the what we see is chondro calcinosis which means the articular surface will be deposited with this calcium pyrophosphate when you see uh, the joint aspirate under microscope here you will have negatively by refringent needle shaped crystals whereas here you are going to have rhomboid crystals okay so all these i am going to show you the clinical images one by one so this is acute gout and pseudo gout how you can see clinically you know how, what is the difference in pathogenesis and uh, which kind of joints are involved so once we have learned it let's look at some of the clinical images so here you know typical this is the first most common joint involved the first metatarsophalangeal joint in cases of gout now this what you can see is the soft tissue deposit what you can see is the soft tissue deposit of the uh, uric acid and this is what you call as tophi okay then these are the slides so this is what is uric acid crystals will look like okay these are negative uh, needle shaped crystal negatively birefringent this is your rhomboid shaped crystal and this is your bipyramidal crystal can you tell me when is this kind of crystal seen so this is seen in calcium oxalate deposits in calcium oxalate you will have bipyramidal uh, crystals rhomboid in your pseudo gout the deposition is of calcium pyrophosphate crystals okay so this let's look at this particular image so here you can see uh, this is what you called as a martel sign okay this is what you called as a martel's sign and what is martel's sign basically it is the damage the sclerotic damage of the articular surface and this is what you uh, you know see is the double contour sign so what is double contour sign basically on the articular surface there is depositor of hyper echoic uric acid crystals so uh, so suppose uh, this is the bone and uh, this is the articular surface so here also uric acid is there and this is the bone so both of these are hypoechoic so you will have double contour sign again seen in your gout cases now let's look at the question now as i told you let's rule out one by one this option so pseudo gout can be ruled out because you have first metatarsophalangeal joint i have told you that primarily you know knee joint will be in involved so no such history is there reactive arthritis what is reactive arthritis reactive arthritis is when you have in you know infection in any part of the body and secondary to that infection in any other part of the body you have arthritis that is called as reactive arthritis now here clearly they have you know ruled out such kind of history so reactive arthritis can be ruled out one side note i want to talk about in reactive arthritis is a very important syndrome super important syndrome which gets keep on asking in the examination that is writer syndrome so it's a kind of reactive uh, you know reaction when there is infection infection in any part of the body it presents as a triad so you have conjunctivitis you have uveitis and you have arthritis and this happens due to the secondary infection and uh, due to the infection in any other part of the body the body reacts and it causes conjunctivitis uveitis and arthritis so this is writer syndrome re uh, related to reactive arthritis let's talk about septic arthritis one of the easiest to rule so you have acute gouty arthritis as the most probable diagnosis now i understand when you see a normal uric acid level then you uh, you know uh, tend to doubt that is it the correct answer or not so i'll give you few hints which says that in question this could be the correct answer one is the alcoholic patient second is this classical first metatarsophalangeal joint third is increased leukocytes okay so in patients of acute gout uh, many times you will have uric acid as normal and this question has been given uh, to sensitize you to this particular fact and it can be normal because of some dietary modifications they might have gone some treatment they they might be taking so and 
otherwise also you will have patient who has episode of uh, acute gout but their uric acids may be normal so don't get confused so the correct answer here is acute gouty arthritis and if you really like this video you know i would want you to be a part of medical apps community just hit the subscribe button and get connected so that whenever i upload such kind of mcqs you are uh, you know notified about it and you can see it watch it immediately